Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the analog receiver module on my SkyZone 040 Pro. Right now I've got the SteadyView version 3.3, which yes, it is their new version of the SteadyView, but it still leaves a lot to be desired. So let's go ahead and do a performance upgrade. The new module we'll be using is the SpeedyB GR58, which is their 5.8 gigahertz goggle receiver. I bought this from Amazon. I will link you in the video description. Let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing. So if I pull this out here, we've got our normal product religiator with a QR code. And then we've got the receiver itself. Really, this is the quickest unboxing I've ever done. Looking at the module itself, it is bright and yellow. We do have two SMA antenna connectors. We've got a OLED display, a five-way joystick for navigating the menu. We do have a micro USB connection over here. I did plug this into my computer and there is no firmware update available. This is still running the original version 1.00 firmware. Otherwise, it's a receiver module, so really not more to say there. For the testing, I'm gonna be using my Beta FPV Air 65. I will set this to the lowest output power, which is 25 milliwatts. I'll be using Raceband Channel 8 for all the testing and I'll be doing the testing back to back on the same day from the same location. So we'll make the testing as accurate and scientific as we possibly can. The first test will be done with the included SkyZone SteadyView version 3.3 module. I've got the latest firmware as of filming on this, and here are the antenna that I'm using for this testing. We are armed and we can see before takeoff, the image quality is quite good. I'm getting a couple of flashes, nothing too major. So let's take off and I can definitely see some flashing. I can see some static, nothing too major, but let's go ahead and do a quick flight. We're not trying to test the quad, we're trying to test the video performance and definitely I'm getting some breakup over here. Nothing too major, but we'll definitely have to keep an eye and see how the other module performs, but I'm gonna fly very slowly Definitely a lot of breakup in this area by that mirrored thingy. And if I fly around this particular obstacle, definitely quite a bit of flashing and quite a bit of breakup happening. Nothing too concerning, but definitely given how close I am to myself, I am getting a little bit of interference. Let's go around back here. And let's see how this performs as we get closer to myself. So definitely the image does clear up as we get closer to ourselves. And then we start to get some more breakup and some more flashes. So over here is probably the worst by this obstacle. And I think by this obstacle here. These, these two locations have probably the worst possible uh, image clarity but nothing too crazy, nothing too concerning, and definitely is flyable with the included module. But let's go ahead and switch modules and see how the other module performs in comparison. Next, we have the SpeedyB module installed. I've installed it in the same module bay with the same antennas as the prior test. We'll set the goggles over to the third-party receiver module, and we'll do exactly the same test once again. And you can see we are on race band eight as promised and we are armed. So we're right before takeoff and I'm not seeing too much difference between this and the steady view module. Let's go ahead and do the same kind of test. So I'm just going to take off and fly around slowly. So I think I'm getting less breakup. So definitely I'm not getting those uh, static kind of lines as I was with the prior module. Definitely, I'm still getting some, but they're a lot smaller and a lot less noticeable. But let me go around, I think it was the first obstacle here that seemed to have the biggest uh, breakup. So we're still getting a little bit of breakup, but definitely the breakup is quite a bit smaller than it was with the prior module. And I think the other area with the uh, breakup was around this particular obstacle over here. So I'm definitely getting a lot less breakup. I'm still getting a little bit, like I mentioned, but it's quite a bit smaller and less noticeable. I do like that we get those little transmission bars on the recorded video, but let's go ahead and do a full lap. So it does clear up over here. 
And as I fly through, I think once we come around the next corner, this is where we have the worst signal. And this thing seems to be, oop, this thing seems to be handling it really, really well. So given this quick test here in the basement, definitely seeing this module performing quite a bit better. As you notice on my flight footage, I definitely had a better experience and a clearer image using the SpeedyB module versus the SteadyView module that came with my SkyZone goggles. There are a couple of things to be mindful of, however. First one is that you can no longer change the channel of the receiver through the goggles. You have to use this little joystick on the receiver module itself. Not a big deal, but it does break some of that um, integrated kind of experience that you have with the original module. The other thing to be mindful of is that the automatic recording continues to still work as expected. So I've got these goggles set to automatically record when they acquire a signal from the quad that still works a-okay. The biggest drawback with this module though is that it does not fit into the module bay of these goggles. This module is a little bit bigger than the SteadyView module and definitely thicker as well. Now, if you wanted to sand this USB port, maybe sand a little bit of the board, you are able to fit it into the bay, but you're gonna have a tough time trying to get an actual cover on there. And I did not find any 3D printable covers that will work in that kind of manner. Your best bet is to 3D print an external module attachment such as this. I did actually remix this from an existing design. I will give you all the links in the video description. I printed this in PETG using supports as you see on the screen. You will also require a module pin extension such as this. I got this from Amazon. I will link you in the video description. This came as a 10 pin extension. I had to cut one pin off because we want a nine pin extension. So I just use a pair of cutters and cut that one section off. Then all we have to do is get this into here. And the best way and the easiest way of doing this is to line up this section here. So you see this rectangle, line it up with this opening here. So I'm gonna see if I can do it on camera, but you see how it slots into this opening right here. So make sure you line it up properly because it only goes in in one area, one direction. So what you do is you start it there and then you just kind of force it in. It needs to click in and then there we go. We are clicked in. So this actually now extends our module bay into a slightly bigger bay and you can see where the actual pins will go. So what we will end up doing at this point is we're gonna slot in this extension into this hole and it's got some um, kind of guides that will guide it in. And then once you get it started, that's good enough, the module will push it the rest of the way in. So at this point, we can go ahead and line up our module with those pins. And then we're gonna go ahead and push the module in. Now, make sure you don't push the module using the display. Now we'll go ahead and install the cover that came with the module itself. Make sure you line everything up. It should snap right into place. Now I may have to do this, oh, I was gonna say I have to do that off camera, but actually I did not. Now let's power it up for the first time. Fingers crossed this will work. Yep, and we're in business. So this is how ultimately it looks. It does add quite a bit of bulk to your goggles, but still not too bad given the extra performance that we're able to get. So hopefully you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos.